I'm talking right now with uh, Kasim Haviz. He's uh, one half of a, a documentary coming out in a couple of weeks in early October called Never Again. Uh, and he's uh, sharing some of his story about how he went from being uh, radicalized as an anti-Semite uh, to someone who uh, embraced Israel and is now a supporter of Israel after he uh, was able to encounter someone up close, to, to encounter the story of a Jewish person up close. Um, so first, Kasim, I want to ask you just why is it so important to tell this story now why did you want to be a, a part of this documentary uh, so there's a number of factors behind it I think one of the most pressing I guess was just the rise in anti-semitism that we're seeing um, yeah, all the statistics sadly are pointing to the fact that anti-semitism is rising in the United States and globally and there just seems to be so much apathy or even just acceptance mm -hmm. where anti-semitic comments can be made by people with influence in our society yeah. and it's kind of brushed off so we thought it was kind of vital to do something to really get people to engage with the reality and the cost of anti-semitism and why do you think that even in 2020, in a, in a world that, that we like to think has become increasingly accepting, uh, increasingly diverse, uh, and welcoming of, of different faiths, different ethnicities, whatever, why do you think that this continues to be such a huge issue in our culture, and, and not just in American culture or in European culture, but around the world? I think there is a, I, th I think there are a number of reasons. I think one is that there's this idea that anti-Semitism ended with the end of the Holocaust, that mm. the world was so shocked at what had happened that anti-Semitism died there, which is sadly, it's not the case. And two, anti-Semitism has been um, re-energized and twisted to the point where you can say anti-Semitic things and you're almost get out of jail card is, no, 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 it's not about the Jews it's about Israel. Mm. So there's almost this kind of get out of jail card, which is really disingenuous. And again, the statistics and some of the awful shootings at synagogues in the last few years have shown, no, the reality is anti-Semitism is here and we need to tackle it like we would tackle any other bigotry or hatred yeah. instead of it looking at it through a different lens. And for you, this isn't really just like like a far off academic or abstract issue. This is something that you've dealt with in your personal life, uh, as the documentary Never Again shows, is uh, that it wasn't until you had an up close encounter with somebody, until you traveled to Israel and really learned about uh, the culture uh, and learned about people there that, that you had a change of heart. Can you talk a little bit about your personal journey uh, away from anti-Semitism and into uh, a culture of em embracing differing worldviews? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I guess I'd word this. I was the anti-Semite. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I grew up in the UK and just grew up where in a community where anti-Semitism was very casual and accepted. And growing up at a time where extremism was rising, and there were a number of factors to that, I kind of embraced that and the anti-Semitism that came with it. And, you know, I was on this path of radicalization was extreme and had got to a point where I believed that terrorism against Israel and the Jews was justified. It was a good thing and wanted to join a terrorist group myself. Um, a number of things happened, which we talk about in, in the movie. And instead I ended up visiting Israel for the first time. And I had never, so in 23, 24 years of my life, I've had this intense hatred of Jews. I've never met a Jewish person in my life. Mm. Um, and then I go to Israel and just the reality of it, speaking to people, I, I guess it, it, it went from seeing Jews and Israel as the other to actually seeing them as humans again, as people. Yeah. Uh, and that's the dangerous thing. When we dehumanize people, you can make justifications to do awful things or see awful things happen to them because you no longer see them as human beings with real emotions and families and all those things. So, yeah, that really was the moment where I realized my own wrong and decided that I had to now speak out for what's right and share my experiences. And with that, it took me down a very different path that my life was going down initially and to where I am today, where 
I want to speak out against. If something's wrong, it's wrong. We have a responsibility to speak out. And of course, like today, I'm a Christian, so that's even heightened the, yeah. the you know, to speak out against what is wrong. Like it's a biblical commandment. It's not optional. Right. And was it something that at the time that was a, a transformation that was just kind of an aha mo- moment that was overnight? Or was it something that happened over time that you didn't maybe realize until after the fact uh, that, that your perspective had changed? So in terms of the acceptance of I had got it wrong, that was very much an aha moment. Being in Israel for the first few days, there was this chipping away at what I believed, just seeing yeah. it firsthand. But there was a, a definitive aha moment when I was in Jerusalem but then the, the path that I ended up taking was gradual there wasn't I didn't come back with this I want to be this you know somebody who stands up to anti-semitism it was just I'm just going to tell people in my community what I saw it th- that kind of process just happened yeah. um, but you know, even I went to Israel for the first time in 2007 and even in that space of time I've grown in a lot of ways you know I've learned a lot I've even things I came to believe in those subsequent years, I've gone, oh, maybe I wasn't quite right in things I said or did. It's been a constant process of growing and learning. Yeah. And, you know, right now we're in the middle of, obviously, in the U.S., a, a, a highly contentious presidential election where the world is kind of polarized right now with coronavirus, with different political issues. Uh, and when we're seeing so much vitriol toward the other, uh, if you're conservative, you look at liberals and you see them as the other. And, and there's there's a, a, a knee jerk reaction to villainize them. And then the other way as well, liberals might see someone conservative and, and, and the knee jerk reaction is is to to otherize them or to see them as evil. Uh, why is it so important right now for, for the lesson of never again uh, to maybe permeate not just the, the, the obviously the evils of anti-Semitism, but the evils of just hating someone who's different than you? For sure. Um, it's about re-exploring our humanity. I think we've become so dependent on digital mediums, especially during coronavirus. We, we put ourselves in these echo chambers and dehumanize people who think differently Uh, and we're talking about people who have different beliefs we're not talking about people who have hateful or angry they just think differently and we've got to kind of get back to a point where we see the person and try and understand because especially here in the united states so i've been here for a few years and yeah you know I, i genuinely love this country but as a country and a society we move forward together yeah there isn't there isn't a you know, one side moves forward and the other doesn't, we move forward together and we've got to really, and I guess this is the message of Never Again, that one, we need to see the humanity in other people. Two, we have to be willing to challenge what we believe. If I believe something and I'm not willing to question it and instead surround myself in an echo chamber, probably shouldn't be believing it. I like genuinely, yeah. if it can't stand up to any questioning. And thirdly, wrong is wrong. Like, you know, if I do something wrong and it's my, and I do it because I believe in something, if it's wrong, it's still wrong, regardless right. of what I believe. There, there is a, there's much ambiguity in the world, but there is also some very clear right and wrong. Yeah. And, you know, you want to be people, we want to be a society, we want to be people, we want to be a country who does what's right based on what is right rather than what we feel comfortable or what echo chamber we've surrounded with believes is right because think about it you know 15 years ago i believed that jewish school children being blown up on a bus was the right and moral thing to do i mean and if you look at that zooming out nobody would think that's the right thing to do but that's yeah. where my level of belief was and the echo chambers that i surrounded myself in yeah, and I think there's a lot of truth to that you know the further we silo ourselves uh, the more bizarre other ideas seem to us uh, the, you know the the more we we uh, inculcate ourselves in in an, in an idea uh, whether it's radical or not uh, the more the more other uh, 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 differing perspectives seem and the more out of this world other ideas seem um, i want to ask in the process of making uh, the documentary never again what was something that was maybe illuminating to you that that even though obviously you'd have had this transformation, uh, what was the process like uh, to to make the documentary and to relive a lot of this story? So 
it, it had an effect on me which I had not foreseen at all. You know, when we were, when we started filming, I, I saw it very kind of conventionally, like we've got to do this, we're gonna film this, cool. But going back, you know, to Israel, going back to the UK, I realized that I confronted my past in a way I never had done. Mm -hmm. And look, I've told my story many times, but there were so many things that either I had completely forgotten about, or I'd almost disconnected from this idea that this was me, but it's not really me. Yeah. So I had to really kind of connect and understand. And I think that really, it was difficult and uncomfortable for, for a large period of it, but I came out of it with a lot more clarity and also really understanding my own process of radicalization and extremism and seeing how it's very, it happens easily. It's not, and it doesn't, it's not just, you know, in the Muslim community, people can get radicalized and feel isolated and all these things. They happen all over in our communities and societies. And it really made me refocus on that. It's something to be aware of. And coming back to what you mentioned, we really have to be kind of a healing voice. We have to bridge those gaps. We have to build those bridges to people who are feeling that way before they get deeper into, you know, the, this pit of bad ideas. Yeah. And as someone who's now a Christian and on the other side of, uh, of where you were, um, what have you seen ab about the importance of, of maybe extending grace to your, to your former self and being, uh, being forgiving of yourself and, and realizing that, that, that where you came from is not who you are. Uh, the, you know, the process of transformation is, is, can be a messy one. Um, so how, how have you balanced that in your life? It was definitely challenging, especially being a Christian, because this idea of grace was almost alien to me growing yeah. up Muslim. And there was this very, uh, a mixture of guilt, shame, and anger at who I was. And there was also a lot of anger uh, about, you know, those years where I felt that essentially kind of I was robbed of a lot of years because I had mm. these extreme beliefs. Uh, so it was a difficult process. And, and I would say, honestly, that the, the moment where I've been able to really forgive myself and go, look, you know, everything happens for a reason. And if that hadn't happened, you wouldn't be a Christian today, which, you know, would be awful. Yeah. Um, so, so that was going through that process has only been the last six to eight months. And it's been difficult and it's been challenging. But, you know, in these difficulties, there's growth. And yeah. that in itself is a blessing. And, and I'm really thankful for that. Yeah, absolutely. So the documentary, uh, like I said, will be uh, in theaters for a few nights in, in early October uh, in select theaters around the country. And I wanted to, to ask you, for people who go in to, the, to see the, the movie, to see the documentary, what's the key takeaway that you hope that, that they walk out of the theater with? Uh, so th there's a couple. If this is something which is not on your radar, I hope it makes you realize the gravity of the situation and it's the first step. But if you are somebody who is engaged or have an interest or are aware, I hope this is the starting point where you go, what else can I do? Yeah. Like, how can I make this change? Look, we are, we're called to be, you know, the, the, the city on the hill. We're called to be the light and we're seeing a wrong happening against our Jewish brothers and sisters, our fellow Americans we have a responsibility. Like I always believe in all these things, the church has to lead and that's all of us. So yeah. I, I hope that it, it, it stirs something in people's hearts where they realize that sitting on the sidelines isn't an option. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, like you said, perhaps with the Holocaust, we kind of, uh, at least in our mind, even if it was subconscious, we put the issue to rest. Like this isn't something that, that we deal with anymore. Uh, but obviously, as, as your documentary highlights, as so many other reports uh, over the recent, recent years have highlighted, this is still very much an issue. It's still very much alive. Uh, as Americans and as Christians, uh, this is my last question for you. Why is it so important that we do uh, stand with Israel, that we do continue to raise awareness, whether it be through documentaries like yours or other ways? For sure. So there are a number of things. I, you know, The founder of Kufi always says that supporting Israel, standing up to anti-Semitism, it's not a political issue, it's a biblical issue. 
Yeah. You know, and, and there are various uh, quotes on the Bible which talks about the promises and the covenants that the Lord made with, with Israel. And from uh, a second perspective, the roots of our faith are Jewish. You know, it may surprise some people, but Jesus yeah. was Jewish. You know, John wasn't a Baptist. He was also Jewish. You know? <laughs> um, so our very spiritual heritage is Jewish. And you know, when you read scripture, the Jewish people, you know, they, they kept the torch, the, uh, the, the light of faith alive in difficult circumstances. So to the point where, you know, we have a Messiah who is Jewish. Yeah. So I think on that spiritual heritage, there is much that we need to be aware of. And sadly, there are some who, you know, say they're Christians who have been responsible for some of the most awful anti-Semitism. Mm. So we, well, you know, I don't think I'm responsible for the anti-Semitic acts by those who, you know, claim the Christian faith or claim that they are working in the name of Jesus. I feel a responsibility as a Christian to do right, yeah. to do good and to heal brokenness. And there is sadly a lot of Jewish people who have a view of Christian based on a very problematic history, but also I go on what the scripture says and what the Bible says about Israel and stand with Israel and Jewish people. And just on a, on a simpler term, it's the right thing to do. You know, if, if there is a wrong happening for me, I think the church has to be at the forefront of going, this is wrong. And, you know, we, we worship a God who loves us no matter who we are, no matter what we do, there is this unconditional love. We need to love others like that, especially those who are being mistreated or being discriminated against or being persecuted. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, if, if 2020 hasn't uh, illuminated anything, it should at least uh, tell us that, that as believers, when we see evil anywhere, we have a responsibility uh, yeah. to call it out and to, to take action. And that's exactly what uh, what the documentary Never Again does. It's in theaters, select theaters around the country, October 13 and 15. Uh, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk with us, Kasim. Not at all. Thank you so much for your time.